Hello everybody. Welcome to the Hot Tub Build Series. So I've been slaving away over the past seven months or so to build this magnificent hot tub. So I'm filming this video at the end of the, the build, but it's going to kick off my playlist on this, which I'll link uh, in the description. And uh, this will also serve, this will serve as an overview of all of the, of the hot tub and how it works. And also sort of as a video user's manual. And I'll go into some detail towards the end on, on the intricacies of operating and maintaining this tub. So about the tub itself. Uh, it's a hexagonal shape, concrete cap, single, uh, single pour hot tub. Uh, the angles of the hot tub were designed to match the angles on the house. Everything in this house has a very unique 60 degree or 30 degree angle. Uh, we excavated this hill, which was just a hill here. And we probably moved, I got, I think, 20 tons of dirt. Uh, built this retaining wall, uh, reinstalled a new form and EPAY deck that surrounds it, and then obviously the tub itself. So I'm going to pull the cover off and I'll show you some of the tub details. As you can see, it's a hexagonal shape hot tub. There's a lower footwell area that's smaller. And then we have a little seat that's three inches lower and then, a hot, and then four um, sides of it that are three inches higher. I believe it is about 21 inches to water level uh, on the shallower side and 24 on the deeper side. All this is uh, Light Streams glass tile. Uh, this set of tiles was custom mixed for this application, so basically we took two of their collections and had them randomize it with a combination of the reflective and the, um, the, the iridescent sort of a metallic mirror look. It's ha it has uh, 12 jets um, on, the, uh, on the sides. Right now we have uh, spinning jets and uh, directional jets in, alter in al alternating pattern. I'll turn the jets on with the left button here. The jets are uh, powered by a four horsepower motor, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, this is the low speed, and then we also have a high speed. Once the water that's in the jet lines is cleared out, it will start uh, foaming up quite a bit. The, there's three return jets that are set up in a circular pattern in the footwell that spray the returned heated water. And the heated water comes from a drain that's a combination of this linear drain down here and the skimmer. Inside the skimmer you have a float valve and a bias valve that will determine whether you're getting more water from the skimmer or more water from the drain and the circulation has its own pump so you don't have to worry about uh, forcing this high pressure jet water through the filter and all that stuff. Uh, the right button you can think of as uh, light, light is right, will turn on the lights down here which you can't really see too much in the daytime but at night they are gorgeous and you can cycle through different modes by double tapping the uh, the button here. So green, multicolor, I really like this purple mode. Uh, when the jets are running and it's nighttime, it looks like you're in like actually colored water, like it's a potion or something. It, it's, it's gorgeous. And then the last thing over here is the temperature readout, which right now it says high because we have to adjust the temperature sensors. There's a couple of little tweaks to make but it will, it's powered by the custom control panel and it'll read out the temperature of the water coming back into the tub. The 
tub itself was constructed um, completely out of concrete. So what we did was we we put down a gravel base layer, then high density insulation foam and a vapor bear and completely sealed an insulation layer. Then we built a set of forms, did a mono pour in a couple stages, cast the entire thing in concrete with the plumbing, you know, inside the concrete with rebar and whatnot. And then once the concrete had set, we smoothed everything out and tiled uh, the, uh, the tub. And on top here we have a Pennsylvania bluestone surround with a sealer on it. And that's, uh, that's pretty much the basics of this tub. So I'm going to show you some of the equipment that runs this whole thing. All right, let's start with where the power for the whole tub comes from. So we have two disconnects here. This is a large 100 amp disconnect, and this is a smaller 30 amp disconnect. The 100 amp disconnect is fed from this main service panel. There's a 100 amp breaker in here, 100 amp fuses in here. This power goes to the heater, the jet pump, and some of the accessories in the pump house. Uh, this disconnect powers the control panel and the circulation pump. The reason we have these two disconnects is because this disconnect is fed from the generator sub panel in the basement of this house. Uh, we set it up like that so that in the event of a power loss in the winter, the generator would keep the water cycling through the hot tub system to prevent freezing. Uh, we have a unique way of running the jet lines for the two pump system. The circulation is in a pipe that surrounds another pipe and the jet water is in the middle pipe. So it has a heated jacket of water keeping the jet water from freezing basically. And that whole thing is in a tunnel between the pump house here and the hot tub, you know, heavily insulated. So very low chance of a full freeze. Another reason we have the generator for the um, circulation pump is we have the plumbing set up. So if we needed to pump it out, you could use the circulation pump to take all the water out of the hot tub. If, you know, there was a really big problem, there was no power coming back on for a while and the water would eventually freeze after several hours. So here's the pump house, which is the brains and the uh, equipment for the entire hot tub. Let's go inside. During the summer, it's a good idea to keep these vents cracked so we can cool the motors if need be. And there's a lot of equipment going on here, but uh, part, part of the reason it looks so cluttered is because there's a limited amount of space, but also there's a bunch of different features that we'll go through right now. So, turn the light on, you can see everything. So we'll start with the power, and then we'll go to the plumbing. So here's the service panel for the hot tub, which has got the 100 amps coming in from that 100 amp disconnect. This 20 amp GFCI breaker feeds the uh, jet pumps. We have a GFCI outlet right down there and that feeds the chlorinator. We have a GFCI breaker that feeds the light transformer. We have two 40 amp GFCI breakers that feed the heater, which is a big, uh, I think it's 16 or 18 kilovolts, kilowatts. And then we have another GFCI breaker, which feeds the light and down here outside to the uh, exterior utility outlet. We set up this with a power monitor so we could monitor the current usage. The heater is an EcoSmart spa heater, uh, 18 kilowatts. Uh, it has, it's sort of a generic model. They have, they have uh, a nine and 18 and a 27 and they basically just have three different chambers for uh, the heater elements in there. So this is using two of them. And finally, from an electrical standpoint, we have the custom control box. So this is basically a, an Arduino and several uh, custom boards and several relays. Um, and the Arduino allows us to program things like the pulse, which m pulse width modulated button lights, which kind of glow and undulate. 
as well as any kind of maintenance timing. We can have the jet pumps run once a day. We can we can turn off the the circulation pumps. Uh, it also has all the control switches, so this will turn on the control panel. We have the circulation pump. We have a priming pump, which I'll show you in a minute, and we have the ozone generator, which is right down here. And that generates ozone to help clean the pool water. All right, from a plumbing perspective, let's start with the jet line, which is a much more simple system. The jet water comes in here, goes through a clear section of pipe to a check valve, over into the four horsepower pump, which is pumped up into here, which is, I call this the priming stack. Uh, this allows you to hook a garden hose up, and there's a, this is an air release vent, which I have to add, this is in the mail, I gotta add a little vent to this. And then there's a vacuum hose, which I'll show you towards the end. The vacuum allows priming. We have a regulator valve, which could, this would allow us to turn down the jets if we needed to, it's not really necessary. Uh, even at the most powerful setting, the hot tub is really, really nice. And then the water comes out through another clear section of pipe and a union and back to the hot tub. Okay, so the circulation pump it has a lot more stuff in line. Uh, all of this stuff would ordinarily have water blasted through it by the jet pump, um, but because the circulation pump uh, doesn't need to power the jets, it can be a lot lower power. Same thing, water comes through, clear section to a check valve, goes into the 1 15th horsepower um, circulation pump up into the drain fitting. So we can we could turn this valve so that the water goes up into here and this is a garden hose connection. So if you need a drain, you basically attach a garden hose and change this valve and it'll send all the water out the garden hose to wherever you want. Water comes out of here through a cutoff valve, through a union, to the pool filter, out the pool filter, to another cutoff valve, up into the area where we have a sacrificial anode. Now the sacrificial anode basically provides a place for corrosion to occur, and it's a grounded, bonded uh, zinc anode. Basically, you're gonna have you have. Um, you know, the salinity in the water, it's gonna eventually conduct a little bit of electricity and things are gonna start to corrode. You'd rather have the corrosion happen in a place where you can, uh, you know, throw this thing away than throughout your heater and whatnot. This has its own little air vent to make sure that there's no air trapped in here. Water goes through this bypass valve, which allows us to regulate the output temperature of the heater. Even if the heater's fully on, we could put it a little unheated water. This we don't really use much. Uh, water goes into the heater, is heated up a bit, comes out of the heater, goes to its priming stack. Same thing as the, as the jet pump priming stack, garden hose, air vent, down through the ozone venturi. This sucks ozone uh, from the uh, ozone generator. And then down into the salt generator. You can see some bubbles going in there. That's this guy here, the core maker. Uh, we got low salt right now. We're still kind of trying to figure out what our salt levels are going to be. But you can see the bubbles. It's turning the salt, which is a, a sodium brom bromine, I think, sodium bromide, into bromine. Then the water goes through another check valve and back to the hot tub. All right, maintenance of this hot tub is going to require a couple things. Filter is the main one. In order to change the filter, you'll turn off the circulation pump, uh, close these valves here, that'll isolate this, twist this uh, bleeder valve, which will bleed off any air or pressure in here. Uh, make sure this is pulled up as you twist off this retaining ring and remove this cover, which has an O-ring on it and that'll expose the filter. Uh, there's a shelf that I'm going to be putting in here that has one of these uh, strap wrenches. I find that this ring is pretty hard to remove and I could not find online a wrench to remove it. So I used a strap wrench and I put a little bit of uh, lubrication on this ring. 
really the o-ring is what's doing the sealing so this thing does not need to be reefed down on to to keep it tight so the easiest way to deal with this is uh you know once a week or once a month you know depending on your use pull this filter out there'll be a second filter here you pop that back in you're back in business and then you can clean the uh filter element chlorine is another maintenance thing you're gonna have to consult the chemistry tests and the amount of sort of cleanliness you need in order to know how much salt you have to add and the manual for the core maker is in the package of documents that uh is going to be included in here mm. it's going to be a while before the sacrificial anode needs to be replaced but that's another maintenance issue if the pumps are off for a certain period of time you can see a little bit of water has drained out of the jet pump more importantly it's the circulation pump that will need to be primed so the way we have the priming situation up is we have vacuum lines coming to this accumulator and then going to a vacuum pump. When these valves are closed, you can turn on the priming pump and open one of these valves and it'll pull water into the accumulator. And then you can drain that out. So this will be like when the, if everything is off or there's no water in the system, you turn on the priming pump, it'll, it'll decrease the pressure in the plumbing system, which is basically gonna let the entire atmosphere push down on the surface of the hot tub and force water up all the way to the top of this. So I basically would run the priming pump until I see water in these clear sites. And then I close this valve Turn on the air vent and and then turn on the circulation pump. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this overview of this hexagonal hot tub build. Uh, we now have a full series of videos showing every step of the way from excavation to the concrete forming to the tiling to the plumbing, electrical. It is quite a project. And uh, it's very satisfying to relax in this beautiful hot tub. Uh, so let us know what you think. Check out the series and, uh, you know, never stop building. Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated. And always, never stop building.